Captain on the bridge. All right, Captains, we are back on the bridge, and today, yes, we are going to go over Star Trek Lower Decks episode number two, the least dangerous game. Yes, so, on screen. The Captains, we're a little late on this review, but nonetheless, we are going to do this because... As we've mentioned before, we enjoy Star Trek Lower Decks and have just a blast watching. And this episode, I have to say, I'll give I'll give my my rating at the end here. But what we'll first do is go over some of the screen captures, drop my two easies here and there, and then give our final score. So thought I would take a picture again of this because I do love the opening here. They did here with the Cerritos, so just essentially replace the Disco Prize, the Enterprise from Change Your Worlds, with the Cerritos. Love the, it's such a mini feels that I absolutely love and adore it. So, and I'm all for it. But, <laughs> Captain, this started off really strong. And I must say, and this is the image obviously that we used for the thumbnail. And of course, it is General Martok. I thought it was a great, great, he did such a great job, to be honest with you, Caps. And when it came to just him being him, he, he just did it, you know, and he put so much effort and I appreciated all of his lines here was just delivered perfectly. And we'll go over it again, but to me when he did his lines it was just delivered beautifully and it wasn't even that far of a stretch from his character actually on the series but i appreciated it i took this specific one because i thought it was great and of course this is one of course another screenshot from this and it we find out this is actually a game and apparently this is a game that they were trying to sort of give homage to i never even knew about it I don't know much about it, but Captains, if you do know the name of the game, reference below. I've been seeing it on Twitter there. Tried not to ruin any of the spoilers here, but I did see that one that was referencing this. Now, we did already see this in one of the trailers leading up to Season 3. So we knew he was going to be in one of the episodes. Now, I thought it was for some reason he was going to be part of the res rescue of... Captain Freeman, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> but nonetheless, this was an awesome, awesome opening to this. And of course, we have Mariner, Rutherford, Boimler, and Tendi playing this game, which I thought was really cool. I love how Boimler had that sort of Klingon ridge thing there. And it was good. It was a good bonding moment. I, I quite enjoyed it. And it was, of course, it was called Batlets. And I, for some... <laughs> For some reason, I thought it said Batless and Bikinis, but that's the name of the game that they were playing. That was really cool there. And it, it was a very just cool opening. I, I quite enjoyed it. And we're not going to get into so much of this, but I do like how they're still creating that bond between the four of them and it just, you know, the main cast there. I will say throughout this that Mariner as you know, sort of powerful as she's been as the lead, and she's, you know, quite in your face. It wasn't as much here, and, and I do actually quite appreciate that. And she did her Mariner things, but I do like how this is more of a Boimler episode, to me at least. But, and here, here's some of the screenshots we took it. They were using, like, some dice there, some mini Klingon figures, which I absolutely, absolutely... Or there's, a, of course, the name of the episode, The Least Dangerous Mission here. Again, they're just all there. Playing the game here, moving their pieces here. I thought it was great. Having a bowl of chips and guacamole from the scenes. Of it, and they're in just the shuttle bay there. But they also just talk about Mariner, of course, is talking about here her time. It's getting a little rough there with Ransom, but that is the whole shtick here for this season. She is stuck with him, and it does actually come to the service in this episode which was great there is her worried face there they also talk about captain vendom now apparently he is a captain now of the inglewood 
and Boimler couldn't believe it, but he had to go see it himself. So he ranked up because apparently he did not say no, and that's going to be a theme for this episode. And there's Tendi actually the one who's encouraged him to kind of do just, just, just to say the yes, and that's why... And sort of the theme of this is for Boimler to say yes. And I, it was slow to sort of start for me, but it really picked up at the end there and became one of the strongest episodes so far. The shot there of General Martok. And again, <laughs> these little figures are hilarious. I love, I love his lower deck style. I really do. He does look really good and it just fits. And his, his aura of Martok is just there and it's just awesome. Of course, we get a shot here of the Cerritos and a little shittle going down to the planet there. And I thought this was cool, a shot of the what they call the space elevator or the space lift or whatever it is. Their, their mission actually here is to repair that. And you see here, of course, in the shittle, you have Ransom, Mariner, Rutherford, and Billups, they're the ones who is assigned to this mission. What they're supposed to do is repair this space elevator. And then half of them are going to go down to the planet. Now, when they get to the elevator, Ransom assigns Rutherford and Billups to go down there. And they're actually going to see the Delanians. Delanians, I believe, is what they are called. And yeah. They're the ones, of course, Mariner doesn't want because she wants to be the one going down there. The engineers are supposed to do to do the repairs. But of course, Ransom is just testing Mariner to see what she does because she is stuck with him here. So, but they're surprised as anyone else because, of course, they're thinking they're going to be here to repair this, but they're the ones assigned to go down. And of course, as you see here, Ransom is just sort of telling Mariner what's going to happen. Regardless of what she wants to do, that's not what's going to happen. So they're the ones who need to be repairing Space Elevator. And you see them there go down. Now, this is where they are going to. And <laughs> we're going to get back to, to this here because that's going to play a part there. Of course, now we're back to Boimler in his sort of bunker there going over Vendome's because he's kind of upset that he's sort of they do try to do everything he can to rank up and then Vendome just ranks up to literally to captain of a starship there like right away now I'm not I can't remember if the Inglewood I believe the Inglewood is Cerritos but you see there the the bridge view there the view screen it looks like the same sort of control as the Cerritos captains if you know what the Inglewood is Comment below, but it also states here that Vendome got a whole bullion crew. Which again, why not? Makes sense. Works for him. He's the one in command. Tenny comes out. Thought this was really kind of cool. And he's kind of cute. We're going to say that. We're going to say Tendy is kind of cute, but we're also approached here by one of these doctors inviting Boimler to a game of some sort of like the racquetball that we've seen in Star Trek. The next generation of course Tendi reminds boy that this is one of the great opportunity to say yes do so and this is where it sort of begins and he does end up going there and guess who's there shacks and in this scene here he's like knocked all around being chased the last here of course shacks wins it and actually invites boimler because he was so impressed with the how long he was screaming and invites him to the dirge choir first time i've heard of that now i thought i that was pretty cool because i myself am part of a choir and i appreciated this it was quite hilarious so he he actually does join them and they're they're crying <laughs> they're crying and i thought it was really really cool and you know with that shax is impressed and actually says hey if you ever need anything i'm a calm badge away so you know with him saying yes it's starting to kind of sink to him to boimler that 
this is going to help him out. And this is where it becomes really Boimler-centric, and I did appreciate that episode, this episode for that. And of course, out of... After that conversation, there is a... Lundy, who comes out kind of creepily, but sort of lets him know that he needs... Or his class that he's taken for figure drawing class of some sort, they needed a someone, and he asks... Boimler, if you can join, and yeah, he says yes. So he's going to be a figure to be drawn by this class. So he's just saying yes to everyone. <laughs> we go back to the station, and I thought this was hilarious here. Mariner is repairing the station. They're just continuing on there, and what is Ransom doing? He is doing squats, trying to show off, but they're just repairing it as best as they can. Of course, they get checked in by Billups, is saying that they're they're loving being there. The Delanians have a way of communicating, and one of them is kissing. So you can see that they're having a good time there, being treated well. There's that volcano there in the background. But again, all these... I love how colorful Lower Decks has been. It just... A very like, eye popping, and there's so much to look at, and that's why I kind of like doing these reviews as well, going back to them because you get an appreciation, or at least I get an appreciation of the things that I see here. And you know, this is just a great, great looking scene, very vibrant and colorful. Of course, the show that <laughs> Rutherford is loving it, getting kissed there by the Delanians there, and of course, these guys are getting. Yeah, a little, you know, they get a little testy with each other, but of course the whole thing is, you know, Ransom is trying to teach Mariner a lesson that they just want to teach Mariner that she just has to be part of the crew and obey orders, you know? Loved and appreciate the shot of the Cerritos. And I've always said that, especially in the Strange New Worlds reviews that we did, they're giving respect to the hero ship. An odd looking hero ship, but a the hero ship nonetheless. And of course, Captains, we do have the ship in Star Trek Online, and it's been fun. It's just fun to have, great to have, and it's something that you two can own. Captains, if you play Star Trek Online, this is something you can get, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. I just thought I'd drop easy there. Now, shot is here, is in, 10 forward here at the bar. Now, a bunch of the Delanians are here because, of course, they're off the station, the lift, the elevator, the space elevator. Because while the repairs are happening, they can't be there. So they're, they're actually stuck there. And here, while they're talking about, you know, Boimler's updating Tenny and what's been happening there, we have this. A cr his name is Cranch. <laughs> it's quite funny. And so he is actually looking for someone to hunt. So this gave me a lot of Predator slash Herogen vibes. And this, especially when this scanning scene was happening. And of course, Boimler did actually... Actually, Cranch asked Boimler and Tendi. Tendi said no. Of course, Boimler saying, yeah, no, this is... The old Boimler would say no, but this is t this time he's going to say yes. And of course, he just screams at him, starts the whole thing. He agrees to be hunted. So what he what Cranch does is actually break off his tooth and marks Boimler. I thought this was going to play a little bit more of a significant role. Like this is how he would trace him or something, but whatever. And <laughs> so apparently... He's got an hour to prepare. Tandy's like, dude, you got an hour. And then he does. So this is the start of the Boimler scream. And he did it a bunch of times in this episode. It was hilarious every time he did it. And this is this is where it really started to to come to where the in, it came together for me as an episode because it was just more Boimler centric. Even though like this it felt like this was the main story, and then you just had Mariner onto the side there, and then Billups, of course. So now, going back to the station, Billups contacts Mass. Apparently, they have now pissed them off because they were supposed to go to this event, and they did not show their navel. 
in doing so, they piss them off. And, you know, Rancid is telling him, well, you're going to have to work on your own because we're repairing stuff. And there you go, Mariner's course looking, going, man, we, ne we need to go help them. He's like, no, no, they can take care of it while we do the whole repair ourselves. And again, Ransom's really being firm with Mariner here. And this, of course, is going to be like an overarching theme for the whole. I, I want to see where this kind of leads to. But this is good. I, I did appreciate Ransom a lot more in this episode as it became more apparent that his role is going to be bigger in this season, in my opinion, because he's going to be overseeing Mariner for most of the time there. So I think we're going to have a lot of away missions with them. So anyways, back to the Cerritos here. Poimler actually goes to Cratchit's quarters and just kind of... <laughs> See, again, I, he, the, the mark on his forehead is gone, so I thought that was going to be what he was going to use to hunt him. But kind of telling him what's going to happen there. Thought I'd take a shot of that. That was pretty cool, him kind of being looking a reflection from the sword there and of course what happens will they start the hunt starts right now and this is again the beginning of his screams which is hilarious so you have that crunch now chasing boiler throughout the cerritos and at one point their crunch throws an actual like boomerang reminds me of, like batman's boomerang or batarang and boiler's running away he actually goes into the dolphins here I call them the dolphins. I know they're not that. I can't say their name. Captains let me know how to say them. Their race is named, but he runs into their bay and he jumps in and they say, don't jump in here with their dirty shoes. That's messed up because that's where they live. But in doing so, it shorts out the boomerang there. And then he continues to run though, tell them he's being hunted. But of course they say, wow, that guy is such a drama magnet. It's like they didn't notice this guy here at the eye, whatever, is what it is. So while he gets out there, runs into Captain Freeman and tells her that he's being hunted. He's like, not on my ship. But then realizes he's being hunted by Cranch and says, oh, yeah, no, don't worry about it. Um, it you, we have to respect all the species and all that stuff. And lets the hunt continue he's at one time called the security in and then called them off when they because she knows crunch and they actually had like a meal there earlier it was kind of hilarious he's upside down hanging there and he's like thank you for the whatever food item and carol's like you know not a problem while boimler continues to run away from him and back to raz the situation on the surf has gotten worse apparently now they're gonna sacrifice billups because again, they didn't show their navel. So <laughs> Ransom tells him, hey, listen, just request parlay, say it with your chest, your diaphragm. So he's gonna try to do that. But yeah, you see them being taken away to the volcano because he's gonna be sacrificed. So what does Mariner do? Well, she does the Mariner thing and she takes it upon herself to, of course, do what? Do what she does and try to save them. So this was a direct reference to one of the Kelvin timeline movies for the spacesuit where Kirk and Sulu were going down. Of course, she's the one doing it, having fun. But when she's doing this, she gets called by Ransom and says, hey, listen, I think we got to step in. And of course, she's like, oh, yeah, OK. And Ransom's like, OK, I'll meet you at the landing area. And she's like, oh, crap. Trying to tell her, OK, I was wrong, whatever. We're going to have to deal with it. So she pulls her parachutes and, and gets back onto the elevator. And she has to go back all the way up there. And she actually swore here, which they beeped out. I thought was sort of hilarious because she just realizing how far she has to climb up. So Boimler being chased, and now we're back on Cerritos, heads into the shuttle bay, or the shittle bay, and knocks over martok the game apparently the game that they're playing and gives him a little pep talk and he gets all riled up and now he he arms himself some tools and a phaser and i, I guess grease there because they are in the shuttle bay there and he goes out and says you know i'm gonna be the hunter now and while he gives a speech what happens yeah he gets <laughs> He gets a spear thrown at him like this. I didn't expect this. 
This was quite hilarious and funny, but I appreciate it. And now, of course, Ranch catches him all for a selfie. That's it. This is what the hunt is. It's just for a selfie. And he, and he does this because it's just a sort of respect, a, a catch and release. That's it. That's all he wanted. But again, he's hurt. Like, he literally threw... A... Captain, we can't take this serious. Okay, Lower Decks cannot be serious. Would this really happen on any of the series on TV? No. Or this series, not TV. Or what they're streaming right now, like Strange New Worlds, Discovery? No. This is meant to just be lighthearted and fun. And I have to say, I just LOL'd. I literally LOL'd when I saw this, because this was probably like a fun, fun episode for me. And he actually took two <laughs> selfies. But he's telling him, you know, this was just about the hunt. They need to they respect life again, like I said earlier. And Boimler like passes out, and when he does, he takes a, <laughs> he takes another selfie for the boys. And again, he's got a spear, so and here, of course, back at the state, the lift there, you have Mariner just going up the stairs, and apparently it's now a rock wall. So she's got to climb up. And the reason why she has to do this is Delanians are kind of a sort of species on well being, you know, very being very fit and, and, and all that stuff. So this to them was you throw in some stairs, I guess, sure, a rock climbing wall. Why not? He fights her way all the way up there right before Ransom. And apparently Ransom was in the little commander's room there. But look, but look at her. Mariner is sweating, just poofed and tired. I don't know. It didn't say how many sort of levels she had to go up there. But of course, now he's suggesting that they go back. They they need to go down to the planet. They don't have a shittle, so they're going to do the jumps again. And they do that. And you see him having a lot of fun there. And it pans over to Mariner. What's she doing? She's literally sleeping as she's falling. So it was, again, with Mariner doing what she just did previously in the episodes, actually up to leading from the seasons, she was always in your face. I felt like in this episode, she was toned down a lot. And I think it was just the right balance, in my opinion. So I enjoyed even her little Mariner-isms here in this episode. To get back down to the planet, there is Rutherford and Billups about to be sacrificed, apparently due to Medric, the psychic baby leader, and the co-leader, 355 sentient computer. <laughs> it's like, what? I thought that was hilarious and weird. So you have the baby, you have the computer, but also the volcano itself is called, like, a naval sort of volcano it was weird apparently it's a naval is very important to this species to this culture but you have them that they're going to sacrifice them but also when this volcano starts to talk it actually glows of course they get there they tell them to stop ransom is like well you know he requests a parlay and you know listen to me because i am a you know a well if they're all in well-being he, he then he gets a chance to shine to literally shine and show him that he is a person of well-being and hopefully they will listen to him and they actually do he goes up there and yeah talks him out of sacrificing both billups and rutherford because he is a healthy a healthy specimen, I guess. But that's all it needed. Yeah, so now back to serious again. Appreciate the shot. They didn't leave out the ship character. This is a, this is a kind of a better shot of Cerritos, I think. It seems like it was a squatter profile. And maybe that, for me, is what I would love to see. Maybe the Cerritos have a sw kind of a squatter profile. Because it felt like it was so tall with the pylons, but again, I appreciate the shot. Them always giving respect to the ship of the hero ship of the show. Of course, Mariner actually goes to see Ransom, says thank you, and all that stuff. And he's like, "Well, don't think that this is because he she still did disobey him, right? She still did disobey him, but he says, "Yeah, don't try to butter me up or whatever." 
but I appreciated this. They showed you know, Mariner sort of hopefully turning the tide. But again, this is going to be a plot over the season. So I'm interested to see where this is going to go. And I appreciated more, of course, of Mariner and Ransom throughout this whole episode here. Of course, Boimler's back. And they go back to the shuttle bay. They're still, they continue playing the game. And he's all healed up. But apparently he's got some damage there in his shoulder. But that's okay because all of this stuff was all worth it. As it got him in with, of course, Shax. And more importantly, actually what Cranch said earlier is that he would give good word on Boimler's behalf to Captain Freeman there. So he's all happy about that too as well. Hugs Tendi, Tendi kind of felt that, but it, it is what it is. So they continue on playing with the game, but apparently if they wanted to continue, they would have to go purchase the season battle pass. So this was like, this reminded me of sort of expansions that you see. And it kind of, that's how they were sort of presenting this. That is, if they wanted to continue, they'd have to, you know, purchase the next sort of DLC for this. But they were all kind of annoyed at it. I thought it was pretty funny and hilarious. He even <laughs> was pissed off. And of course, we end off there with the Cerritos warping out. So, I really did enjoy this episode. And with how short these episodes are, I find that they're a lot more easier to kind of digest. I will say that this episode, as much as it had nostalgia nuggets, it wasn't a lot in your face. And it's something I kept saying it there. They don't need to always reference any of the previous Star Trek that came before. I think they found a good balance, and this, to me, was a very well-balanced episode of, of course, the Nostalgia Nuggets, to me, was Martok. The Calvin timeline jumpsuit scene there. The music was on point. I loved it. I really did appreciate that. Of course, like I said, I loved how they were showing off, of course, the Cerritos there, here and there. Not much action shot. This was just a warp out scene, but it was still there. And like I said, appreciated it 100%. I quite enjoyed a lot of the interaction between the crew here. And like I said, this was more of a Boimler centric episode. And I quite really enjoyed the fact that they gave him a chance to shine. And hopefully. You know, he kind of ranks up there along like Venom. I don't want to see him as captain, but, you know, something along the lines of what he what had happened when he went onto the Titan, but to sort of be here on the Cerrito. So, again, this whole episode was just fun to, to just kind of watch and just enjoy it for what it was. Like I said, I LOL'd out loud. It was a really fun episode. I found that Mariner wasn't too over Marinering. Is that a word? Sure. Rutherford was rather Rutherford. Tendi had her moments, um, but boy, they're definitely showing through. And of course, General Martok, like having him back there was was awesome. And just at one point, you know, Meredith did say there that it was just they really captured his General Martokisms, and I really think he he had fun going back there and doing this. So I hope they do a lot more of that not necessarily just dropping always those nostalgia nuggets just i think lower decks has found its groove in terms of they can just do whatever now have references here and there but not overdo it i think this was a perfect balance of that the score i will give this is pretty much like a nine it's gonna get a nine for me actually you know what let's go 9.5 i think so far out of all the episodes that i've watched this is ranked really up there in terms of my enjoyment of how the episode flowed and maybe the reason why it got pushed up there a lot was just General Martok. Like 100% General Martok having him there and he had some good lines in there really and it was enjoyable to watch. So there you go Caps. That is my review. That is my EC drop. That is my scoring for this second episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. Again, we're going to continue with these. We will try to get them out as soon as we can. In real life, duties always take precedence, so we have to do that first, and we will do this as best as we can, especially before the next episode arrives. So hopefully we can do the review again 
of episode three when it comes out shortly after but if not regardless no captains that we will so like the video comment below what did you rate this video subscribe here to the youtube bridge look out for the next review that we do here for star trek lower decks but on that we will leave it on this note live long and prosper